In this video I'm going to cover internal armor. Internal armor is what you put inside the boat uh, immediately up against the windows to stop BBs from traveling completely through the boat and prevent them from damaging any of your internal components. What I use for internal armor is pet resistant dog screen. This is a uh, the package, it comes in a tube, you can get it at a place like Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, this is what it looks like. It's a screen material, but it's um, fiberglass reinforced, so it's very strong. And um, it does a good, really good job of both stopping BBs and then also not obstructing any water, so you're not creating like a double hull effect with it on the inside. I've used this on all my builds for probably the past three years or so. Had no failures. Uh, really happy with it. I typically will install the internal armor towards the end of the build once kind of all the major structural things have been done on the boat. So you see the Subdecks installed, water channeling's in, shafts are in, pump mount, motor mounts, the rudder mounts in. Uh, I have the guns mounted, more or less. You can see the uh, forward deck piece right there. So now I'm ready to install the internal armor. I could wait till slightly later in the build, once I get a few more of the internal things mounted, like the solenoids, but what I find is it's easier to put it in when the hull is pretty much empty, when it doesn't have any components in it, and then once I put it in, I can install components essentially for sea trials, so I don't need to worry about putting stuff in and having to take it out to get the internal armor in later. So this process is pretty simple. What I do is um, I'll cut I'll cut pieces of this out and I will pretty much just glue the pieces to the underside of the sub deck here with um, goop. And then I'll just, the piece will kind of just curve down and then, you know, overlap with the bottom of the window here and it'll just hang loosely there. So just show quickly here what it looks like in a completed build. So you can see some glue overlapping there and then the bottom is, uh, is loose, which allows you to, uh, to lift it up to, um, you know, remove BBs if needed. Some things you want to make sure that you finish before you do the internal armor are making sure you know, do like a final cut on the ribs if you maybe left some hard area that you still have to cut out. Uh, make sure you know the sub deck's completely sealed on the bottom. And then you can see what I did here with the, uh, I roughed up the gel coat. Um, one, to remove a bunch of drips that had kind of got over the edge from the various epoxy jobs. But then also that'll help the uh, contact cement stick better when I go to put the sides on. So once that's all done, uh, getting more into it, I'll, um, the first thing that I'll do that is uh, I'll use a rag with um, acetone on it and then clean the underside of the deck from any dust so there was a fair amount of dust that was left over from doing the uh, cleaning up the uh, the sides of the hull so I just went through with a rag and um, you know just kinda wiped it all down so I have a nice clean uh, clean surface for the uh, the glue for the internal armor to attached to. I cut out the first few pieces for the stern 
see them there, they're, they're just loose, they're not attached yet. So the way I do this is, uh, I'll take a ruler, just sort of hold it up. So the distance to the bottom of the subdeck there is, I don't know, maybe two and a half inches. So I usually take that and add about a half inch to cover the, uh, the part that underhangs the subdeck. And I just take different measurements along the hull, measure the distance, and then I'll uh, trace it out and cut it. In the stern, it's a little usually a little bit trickier. Um, you can see the kind of notch I cut in to get around the, uh, the rudder mount. And see so it gets pretty tight back there. So I have one piece going from the stern up to here, and then I have a short little bridge piece up to here because of the where the water channel is. And then I'll actually do the bulk of the length here with just one piece because there's no uh, deck step. I use a silver sharp sharpie and a ruler to uh, just draw out lines like you can see there and then I'll just use some good scissors to cut it. At this point I have the pieces cut uh, for most of the boat. So now I'm ready to glue it in. So what I'll do is I'll cut up some strips of wax paper which are going to help prevent the clamps from sticking to the glue. I'll use a uh, goop my adhesive and I'll have my, uh, my clamps staged. So what I'll do is I'll start at one end, in this case I'll start with the stern, and then piece by piece I'll, I'll take the piece out, I'll put kind of like gobs of goop on it um, every few inches apart. You know the small piece I'll probably do like three, one each end, one in the middle. And then uh, I'll kind of feather in there with the uh, with the stern piece. That'll probably be the most difficult because you'll have goop on here, and when you're sliding it in, you can easily get the goop on other parts of the subject, which is not a big deal, just kind of annoying. And once the piece is generally in place, then I'll just rip off a little piece of wax paper, put the wax paper up against where the glue is and then I'll put a clamp on it and kind of like sequentially go down and then I'll make sure I have at least about an inch of overlap between adjacent pieces so there's no gaps there. There you can see the uh, gobs of goop that I use um, in the spacing so I'll kind of quickly get this uh, clamped on like I have that other piece show the te technique here to get the bow. The bow usually ends up being a little bit of a cluster because of uh, the solid deck portion. So you can see I'll, I'll use these clamps uh, and sometimes I'll use a piece of wood like you see there to, uh, to reach under and hold it up. So you can see I got the first side pretty much set. See the amount of overlap I have with the uh, with the solid area, so that prevents you know shots near the bottom from going through. And then when you put components in, they'll tend to kind of hold the bottom of this, um, so it doesn't blow back very easily. I'll let this side dry overnight, and then I'll probably do the uh, the next side. Um, after that. Sometimes, usually I'll, I'll do the whole boat at once, but with the bow and the stern, with those clamps, um, it's easier to just do one side and then let it dry and then pull the clamps and do the other side. The first side of the internal armor is uh, dry. You can see up in the bow just how it, it comes out with the top portion being glued to the underside of the subdeck. Uh, see the same thing in the stern there. 
So now I will just uh, repeat the process on the other side. At this point the internal armor is now done. Let's see it uh, installed there. So I'll go and I'll trim up some areas where, it, where it's hanging over. But you can generally see how it works with the uh, with the blue. So now that this step is done, I can start installing things that go right up against the internal armor, such as the uh, the solenoids, which will go right in there, and uh, continue on with the build. Thanks for watching.